120. Anyone done it? Anyone done 120? Anyone? Use cylindrical coordinates to find this, the value of this triple integral, where S, the region of integration, is the portion of this, the cylinder, between these two constant planes. Okay, now this is a real simple one. Let's sketch the region, set up the double integral, set up the limits of integration in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so 120. So this is just to give you a little taste of cylindrical coordinates over, over the Easter, you know. Okay. So our read, uh, uh, so let I be the following triple integral. With the region of integration S, Now I'm just going to write this with a less than or equal to sign here. It's still the same region. All right. We want to evaluate. So this, this doesn't have anything to do with volume necessarily. All we've got is we're given some triple integral. We're given the region of integration. Let's just evaluate the triple integral. Okay. But we don't have the limits of integration. That's what we need to find. Okay, so let's draw a picture and see what's what. So this then is going to be some sort of cylinder wrapped around the z-axis. And we know it's bounded below by the xy plane and above by the constant plane z equals 1. So it's going to be, if that's 1, it's going to be something like this. This is going to be A, this is going to be A. Now, as the name suggests, cylindrical coordinates are helpful for cylindrical shaped regions. Now, let's just refresh our memory. Well, what are the cylindrical coordinate type of system and their relationship with the Cartesian? Well, Cylindricals are a lot like polar coordinates. You've got a length, r, an angle, theta, but you've also got another variable, a z variable, that measures height or depth. Okay? So the variables for cylindricals are r, theta, and z. Okay? So... R theta, and we just add one to one extra variable z to, me to measure height. So <clears throat> let's get the r and theta from the projection. In the xy plane, this is going to be some sort of disk centered at the origin with radius up uh, with radius a. So to, to describe this in polars, the description is going to be what? Well, r is between 0 and a, where a is just some constant. To, to trace this out, theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. And what are the surfaces bounding our z? 0, just constants, 0 and 1. That's it. Okay? Now, just like when we looked at polar coordinates for double integrals, we do have to replace this dv with something. Okay? But it's not very difficult. All we replace it with, instead of the dv here, 
we replace it with r dz dr d theta. Okay? So we replace x with r cos theta, y with r sine theta, and dv with r dz dr d theta. Okay? Or dz r dr d theta. You, you can do it a number of ways. Okay, I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, so the region, what are the regions of integration? Well, let's write those in. So now we can simplify using cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Not forgetting to multiply through by my r, so I'll get something like this. Okay, so I integrate r squared with respect to z, plug in z equals 1 and z equals 0. I'll get, what will I get? I'll get 1. Uh, hang on. No, I'll, yes, no, I'll get r squared. Okay, then integrate r squared with respect to r. It's going to become r cubed on 3 when I plug in a and 0. I'll get down to the following. Um, I'm going to get a cubed on 3. And you can see this has got nothing to do with theta, so all I need to do is multiply by 2 pi. 